director of the music degree program here at Caldwell Community College. Uh, welcome to our second installment of the Spring Semester Performing Arts Concert Series. Uh, this has been a global journey so far this semester. We started our first concert with uh, 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 a Kora player from Senegal, from Africa. Um, today we're going to uh, take a little uh, trip um, and, and discover some uh, traditional Irish music um, uh, just in time for St. Patrick's Day. Um, and then our next concert uh, we have, um, uh, we're going to come back to the United States for that. Uh, and, this, and the presentation is a celebration of women in jazz. Uh, so we're going to have a, an excellent jazz trio with us for that. Um, before the concert begins, I do want to remind everybody to uh, silence your electronic devices. Um, also, if you need to leave for any reason, um, please try to do that in between song selections. And if you come back in, uh, wait till you hear an applause so that we don't interrupt the musicians or the audience. Um, there's millions of things I could say about um, Kay and Patrick. All good things. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but you know their their reputations uh, precede them, uh, and really, uh, I, I'd rather do more listening than talking. Uh, so, uh, Kay and Patrick. Well, thank you, folks. We're basically talking about connections between American and Irish music. And this is uh, one of the instruments that we got close to the first time we went to Ireland. It's called a bazooki, mm -hmm. and it was brought into Irish music by Andy Irvine. And uh, we're going to just imagine that we fell into a jam session with Andy Irvine and Bo Diddley <laughs> and some traditional musicians, and this one's called Patty's Beggar Man or the Little Red Haired Boy. Two, three, four. Hey, I'm a little boy from the county called Well, and I make my living singing songs and telling tales. Got a flat top guitar, an old banjo too. I bring a hound dog and a jug of Mountain Dew. Well, I might be in the country sometimes. I go to town where every folks will lend an ear and lay some money down. Might be on a barn, I might be on the stage. Ain't out to be a star just to make a living wage. Well, of all of the jobs I hate picking is the best. When a man gets tired, he can take a drink and rest. Conjure up some tunes and be howling at the moon. Better live it up today, boys. The end is coming soon. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. So stop by the speedy and grab a case of beer. Half past two, ain't nobody going to bed. Can't go to sleep with music playing in your head. Softer loud, I can play them sweet or mean, just depending on the crowd. I don't have a plan, I try to keep my music real. I am who I am, I just play the way I feel. Hey, I can pick them straight, I can pick them high, I can sing you a song about the sweet by and by. Serenade the saints were in paradise, and well, I can lay the devil out and sing his requiem in hell. Well, of all other jobs, I think picking is the best. When a man gets tired, he can take a drink and rest. Conjure up some tunes and be howling at the moon. Better live it up today, boys. Soon. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. So let's go by liquid roots and get a ground to refill. I pass to you, no know, six or eight bed. You can't go to sleep with music playing in your head. new words too and this is uh, in case you didn't notice <laughs> um, we're gonna do a traditional song now that um, 
I don't even know what the name of it is, but we just call it the Irish Blues because it's all about being married. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> talk about the tenor banjo in Irish music and I forgot to tell you about that. The tenor banjo got to Ireland, it came to America and then it went to Ireland, it came to America from Africa just like the five string banjo did, then it got to Ireland and then a famous Irishman named Barney McKenna started playing the banjo with a flat pick in the early 1960s and it sounded a lot like this when Barney had had two pints. <laughs>
next song is called County Clare, and it was written by the great American banjo player, Bela Fleck, who, you know, we typically think of banjo players coming from down around these parts, but he grew up in New York City, and he was named after a great Hungarian composer. Oh. <laughs> um, so, I'm a Hungarian banjo player. Yeah. It's been a while since breakfast. Many, many years yeah, ago, we had a, a band that uh, Bela was part of called Bluegra Newgrass Revival come and play on the campus here. And Patrick was driving them around. And uh, he ended up getting a banjo lesson straight from the man himself on how to play this song. Yeah, and I meant to tell you, that's, that's the thing about making musical connections. Uh, it's always great when you can go straight to the source and get what you need. And, uh, and straight from the source means that Bela had just come back from a tour of Ireland and he spent a great many great nights, apparently, in County Clare. Yeah, and so he wrote this tune called County Clare, <coughs> the five string banjo, verse watch a T. I can't say that word. <laughs> I was having a lot of fun though, in spite of my deficiencies there, I was having a lot of fun playing that <laughs> tune. And I really like to play this tune right here. This is one that Kay learned a long time ago uh, on the tin whistle. And uh, it's one called the singing bird. And I'll get Kay to tell you a little bit about this whistle. And the guitar I picked up, uh, this is a tuning that a lot of the Irish players use. It's D-A-D-G-A-D. -A -D -A -D. They call it dad-gad. And usually when I start playing it, it sounds more like e-gad. 
<laughs> so the first time we saw these whistles um, that are even easier to play than the recorder that you might have played like in fourth grade, um, I thought they were kind of just a step above a tour of toy until I heard some fabulous whistle players play and then I realized they indeed are a very popular and uh, versatile musical instrument. Sometimes they're called penny whistles, but this one cost about 15 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Put the pressure on and group things in groups of two by instruments. And so far, we're about 0 for 1 doing what we said we were going to do. <laughs> but we're having fun. And uh, okay, I guess Jenny Alinchik uh, was the first great Irish flute, flute player that inspired you. You reckon? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, she was in it, she was in college at the time, and uh, she she had developed this. I have to say, she, she had developed this um, disease that is an intolerant, complete intolerance to gluten, so you hear about a lot of gluten-free stuff, but this was many, many years ago before much was known about it, and she said that it affected her, her brain, and she had to take a train ride and then walk 20 minutes to go to the university. And she said that and when she walked from the train to the uni, she uh, had to walk along the river. And she said that it got so bad that she had to uh, 
walk on the other side of the street from the river because she was so afraid that she was just going to throw her flute into the river and be done with it. <laughs> so, I know that you've all gotten to that point, disease or no. <laughs> Well, I don't right. know why I thought of that, but uh, <laughs> it was a really good story, Jay Bob. <laughs> the good news, the good news is that um, uh, she did graduate and uh, went on to have a really successful uh, career as a music teacher, and she has four children, and they all play music, and, and she's just lovely. We had lunch with her and her eldest daughter last fall, and it was fabulous. This song is called "The Island of Woods." one and all gathering and I was taking fiddle lessons and Kay was taking guitar lessons and we ran across a man from Dublin named John Doyle who's considered to be one of the top Celtic guitar players in the world today and John Doyle was so kind as to teach Kay and me several of his secrets and one of his secrets is playing an acoustic guitar tuned to low C most of you guitar players know the guitar is basically in an E minor chord, and then it can be tuned to a drop D in the dad gad like we just had a while ago. But this is a secret tuning that John Doyle shows everybody in the world. <laughs> and uh, 
He shows everybody in the world because he knows nobody can play it as well as he does. But it's a, it's a low C tuning if we've got any guitar players out there. And I always love a song that tells a story. And uh, I, I especially uh, love true stories and, and stories that are sometimes about folks who may or may not be oppressed. This song is about a young man named Jack Dolan who uh, either left Ireland voluntarily or was sentenced to uh, Botany Bay in Australia because that was the penal colony. That's where they sent, you know, when I was a kid growing up here in Caldwell County, if you misbehaved, they sent you to Jackson Training School. But in Ireland, they sent you to Australia. <laughs> and it's a lot easier to get back from Charlotte than it is from Australia, right, Dave Bob? <laughs> so here, yeah, I guess. So here's, <laughs> I'm not good at geography. So here's, <laughs> here, here's one called The Wild Colonial Boy. Can I say just one more thing about this song? I hope you do. Yes. <laughs> I was um, recently reading a book and found out that this song was being sung by a, a security guard for Morgan Chase, who single-handedly respo was responsible for leading 3,000 people, uh, at least, uh, down the World Trade Center on 9-11. Wow. And yeah. uh, he, he sang this song to keep them all together. Calm oh, everybody yeah. down. Two, three, four. Australia, a bush ranger he roamed. He robbed those wealthy squatters, their crops he did destroy. And a terror to Australia was a wild colonial boy. So come along, we hearties, we'll roam the mountain high. Together we may run and land, together we may ride. We'll wander on the valley, we'll get aboard a plane. Scorn a living slavery bound down. Judge McElvoy, who shivered and gave up his gold to the wild colonial boy. One day as he was walking the mountainside alone, listening to the pleasant birds, their clever laughing song, up rode three mountain troopers, Kelly Davis and Fitzroy, and they swore that they would capture him, the wild colonial boy.
colonial glory. This next song was written by Richard Thompson, who is an English songwriter, um, but who played uh, a lot of traditional music from the um, the British Isles. He was nominated by, uh, or not nominated by, he's on the list of the Rolling Stone uh, greatest, 100 greatest guitar players of all time. I'm done on that list. <laughs> I know. Oh. <laughs> but he also writes some really quirky songs that I just uh, dearly love, and he says about this song that everybody needs, every songwriter needs to have an Elvis song. Oh. <laughs> oh, she dressed in the dark and she whispered amen. She was pretty and pink like a young girl again. Twenty years married and she never thought twice. Ladies and gentlemen, that's one of the most celebrated things that we ever got from Ireland. 
was moonshining. Oh. No, and I'm on the wrong song. Just go ahead and have a seat there, baby. <laughs> Hi, you're a handsome lass, you are. One of the greatest things that we got from Ireland is that Patrick Crouch realized that he could actually go out of the country and come back. <laughs> well, what so I, I made him go up to Canada with me. Yep, we went we to uh, uh, Nova Scotia and we spent a week on uh, Cape Breton Island and it's, it's, the traditions are so similar to some of our folk traditions here because they had some um, uh, folks settled from the British Isles so there's a huge Irish and Scottish uh, fiddling tradition there and if you go about 30 miles up the road then it starts sounding like Cajun music because Cajun is kind of a bastardization of the term Acadian and uh, so for the people from Acadia were kicked out and made their way down to um, the Louisiana Territory and started that tradition. But um, we, uh, we got brave one night and we decided to go to a community dance and said that all were welcome and that it was a big, it wasn't a touristy thing, but it was, there would, they, the, the, the local community would welcome folks to dance who were not from the community. So we go and it was a little before the standard tourism season and we're the only people from outside that country, um, at, outside that, that area, who were there. And we had been to contra dances. We had played contra dances. We had danced contra dances down here, but uh, up there, the contra dances—they're just everybody knows them. So they dance. There's no collar. No collar. No collar. And I learned a brand new dance that night, and it's called. You're going the wrong way, love. <laughs> Imagine that. Me being confused. Uh, I also. Kay was talking about uh, Jenny wanting to throw her flute in the, in the <laughs> river. I was standing uh, at Lake Anna up in Virginia. Uh, my nephew had a beautiful place there, and I was out by the river one morning practicing the fiddle. And I couldn't decide if I was going to play this fiddle anymore or just throw it in the lake. I mean, I was really downhearted on this thing. And a friend of mine came walking out of the house with a cup of coffee, and he said, Patrick, he said, he said you really sound good. He said, have you ever heard of a Canadian fiddler named Jerry Holland? I said, no. A couple months later in my mailbox showed up the Jerry Holland Fiddle Book. And I learned that Jerry Holland was not only a famous Canadian fiddler, he was Natalie McMaster's teacher. And so we were at breakfast one morning. I met, finally met Jerry. We were at breakfast one morning. And somebody asked Jerry Holland, they said, Jerry, why don't you dance like Natalie when you play the fiddle? And Jerry was like me. He was a big old boy. And he said, well, I wouldn't be dancing. He said, I'd be suspected of having mad cow. <laughs>
shine them on the cave up. Yeah. Finally, this is my favorite part of the show when we get to the moonshine. <laughs> In Ireland, they call it poaching, poaching, poaching. And, uh, but it's great stuff no matter where you are. <laughs> oh, it'll make you grow strong. It'll give you, your IQ goes way up because people ask you questions and you can answer anything. No worries. Everybody becomes an expert on every subject. And if you're singing hymns, you sing louder than anybody. Is it legal in Ireland? That's the way it goes. We're no, going to... it no. Legal in it's it's less legal in Ireland that than is, it is yeah. here. If you get caught with it, yeah, it's they're all big fines. they got all kinds of fines in Ireland. Come but on. that is where this tradition of moonshining came here. Was yeah. that you know that the that this area was settled by the Scots Irish, and uh, they brought that tradition with them. And just like Kay said a while ago, needed, everybody needs an Elvis song, everybody needs a good old moonshining song. And in this song, the moonshiner's the hero, you know, it's, it's not, oh, yeah. he's just doing what he's got to do to make a living, folks. We all got to do that. Some people even play silly songs like this to make a living. Okay, well. And who wrote this? Uh, this song right here was written by one of the greatest composers of our time, ladies and gentlemen. A composer that has no equal, a composer that will go down in the... Annals of History has been one of the greatest folk composers ever known to mankind. And when I wrote this song, <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about growing up here in Caldwell County. Two, three, four.
We met Mick Hanley, who's a great Irish writer, songwriter, uh, ballad singer man, plays guitar and sings. He wrote a song that became a number one hit in America. It was called Past the Point of Rescue. You may have heard of How Ketchum Do That. And Kay and I had a chance to see Mick Hanley live and in person and stand closer to him than we are to you and soak this song in one night in Ireland in the lobby bar where we had reserved seats. <laughs> this is a reserved seat in Ireland. <laughs> It's the most crowded concert ever attended. <laughs> Ocean. Uh, I think maybe the first tune of Steve Earle's that crossed the ocean and became very popular on the other side was his moonshining song, one called Copperhead Road. But this song, when it hit the American scene, it made a big splash. 
And then I was delighted when we toured, the next time we toured Ireland, to find that a lot of the pub musicians in Ireland were playing this song right here. And I guess if you're gonna, if you're gonna have an Irish song, you better have a Galway song. Mm -hmm. And so this is what this one is. And uh, I have to say, it's, it's one of the few uh, tunes that is very popular in Ireland and still popular in America. Uh, we get a request for this tune uh, almost, almost every time we play somewhere live. And uh, you might notice now that Kay has pulled out the accordion. And uh, so we're, I think that concludes all the instruments we brought with us today, Kay. I think that's the last one. Uh, so this, is, of course, will be our final selection for you folks. We appreciate you being here so much. Thanks a million. Uh, after the show, if anybody has any question or any comment or wants to see any of the instruments or, uh, you know, bring me a dictionary, uh, that would be fine. And we'll, we'll be hanging around after the show if anybody wants to visit. And we want to thank Justin Butler, uh, Coel Community College. Thank you so much, Justin, for having us here today. So Kay's song was about lost love. Mine is too. <laughs> Nothing good ever happens to an Irish romance. <laughs> well, I took a stroll on the old long walk of a day, I, 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 and I met a little girl and we stopped to talk on a fine soft day, I, and I asked you, friend, tell me what would you do? You know, her hair was black and her eyes were blue. And I knew right then. I'd be taking a whirl around the Salt Hill prom with a Galway girl. We were halfway there when the rain came down of a day I ate. And she asked me up to her flat downtown on a fine soft day. I, and I asked you, friend, tell me what would you do? You know, her hair was black and her eyes were blue. So I took her hand and I gave it a twirl. <laughs> and I lost my heart to the Galway. I was all alone With a broken heart And a ticket home And I ask you, friend Tell me what would you do If her hair was black And her eyes were blue I've traveled around Been all over this world I ain't never seen Nothing like a Galway girl 